it's still still going on. Still going on. Same thing as being drug users, same thing as being an alcoholic, same thing as we feel like that we can accomplish and win this bout without Christ, without God, without the Holy Spirit. I mean, there have been people in history that have went through probably just as much as we have went through, and probably even much more. Even Christ. Christ went through a whole lot. Something that we can't even compare to. So in, in essence, what I'm saying to you, please ask me, if there's nothing new under the sun that you think that you're trying to be slick and you, you're going to win at, and, uh, and you don't get the help that you need, I mean, you're not going to win at it. I mean, you feel like that you, you can accomplish it, but you're not going to win at it if you don't get the help that you need it. So what I was saying is that you must stop, you know, and that's the reason I used the scripture first before I went to um, 7, 8, 8 through 14, because there's nothing new under the sun that, that went on then that's still going on. So what I'm saying, let me, now let's turn over to, I think, please ask the 7, 8 through 14. Any comments? Any any questions or comments? Well, Ralph, we, it's not enough to stop doing a bad habit. You have to replace a bad habit with a new habit. That's what you're trying to say. Okay. You can stop, I mean, you can stop drinking, but if you're, if you're the type of person that's set around and when they're bored, they just, they just drink. Right. Well, you're still going to be the type of person that gets bored. So now, when you get bored, you have to find another activity. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough just to stop doing something bad. You have to replace it. Right, right, right. And that's where I used when I was talking about a few weeks ago about your strength and your weaknesses. Just because you felt like you had overcame that, you know, like you said, you still got to put something in place of for you to even become stronger. Mm -hmm. Because that weakness is going to come back again, like it talks about in Matthew. That spirit, you know, it's roaming around trying to find a place to come back to. And if you don't put anything in place of, it's going to come back seven times worse than what it was before. Because the fact is, you have to put something in place of. That's a very good point. Any other questions or comments? All right, okay. Ecclesiastes 7, <coughs> 8 through 14. <coughs> better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in the spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rested in the bosoms of fools. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou, for thou uh, not, not inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he had made crooked? In the day of prosperity, be joyful, but in the day of adversity, consider, God also has set the one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. Now, in this one, I was shooting at the, the, the one little part that was in there, which all of this is real good. All of this is real good from what it's talking about. Um, the wisdom that you have and, and uh and the knowledge part of it as well. It kind of ties back into round four as well. But the patient is better than the pride, according to the, to the, to the scriptures. Uh, according to Ecclesiastes 7, 8 through 14, patience is better than this. And, and I think that's one thing that we forget uh, when we go through these rounds. We lose patience. We lose hope. We lose faith. Um, we forget about that, you know, we're not exempt from this. We're not exempt from the things that we go through because we are Christians. Let's turn over to uh, James 2 and 26 where he talks about faith. I just want to kind of like pearl that that's in there as well. Now we're still in the boxing match. I'm just, we're just using the spiritual side of it as well. Any questions or comments before we continue? James 2 and, 2 and 26, it said, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So, in your time per round, you continue repeating yourself. You continually doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. It's almost saying, like, I want a job. And 
I'm sitting there all day long. I want me a job. 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 And I haven't did anything <laughs> to try to get that job. I want a job. And I pray to God, God, I want me a job. I haven't went online. I haven't got no applications. I haven't, I haven't asked nobody. But I want a job, though. But I got the faith to say that I want a job. I want to work. Lord, I want to work. Lord, I want this job. You know? <laughs> I'm jumping up and down. I'm praying. But I ain't put any works with that faith. And it's dead. If you never apply anything to what you're asking for, it's just going to just be there. Same instances that I'm using in time for round. Whereas if you keep repeating yourself, keep repeating yourself doing the same thing, just like you continually saying that I want a job, I want a job, I want a job, and I never take the time out to try to go out and look for a job, I never go online, I never go down to the human resource, uh, what is it, Tennessee Department of uh, for Jobs or whatever, I never even ask anybody about a job. That, that, that job is not even coming. It's not even, it's just going to sit there. You know, you ask God for it, but it's just sitting there. And the reason I can say that, I'm using all, my own analogy to myself. Like, I have this little bad thing, whereas when I'm having a, a, a financial struggle or something like that, I may take, I may have used something out of the house, whereas I'm going to pump, because I don't want to ask anybody. I may go to the pawn shop. I said, let me see what I got today. Uh, the DVD, I might get $10 for that. <laughs> I might say, okay. I got to the point one time in my life, and, and that's, that's what I'm going to get to about repeating myself, repeating yourself. I had this old financial issue that I was going through, and I don't know if you guys may be aware of it. There's payday loans. I did a title loan. I did a title loan on my vehicle. I went out, got the money, paid bills. Help the family out, did whatever that I needed to do. Didn't blow it or anything. It was for a cost. But I ended up, and, uh, and I came back again after I paid that one title off, loan off, and I did it again. I'm like, whoa, why am I continually repeating myself? I know I can do better in the finances that God has given me. And I wasn't doing anything bad with the finances. I was just paying bills. I was trying to help family. I was trying to help myself. It was just things that was just bubbling down. Same thing. Happen to me. And that's what I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to tell you because I don't mind sharing. I pay it long. I mean, tight long. Thought that I was kind of caught up on it. I was worried about trying to help my daughter pay her, her car off. I mean, you know, help her with her bills. Made an arrangement with the tight long folks. I get up Wednesday. I'm just testifying. And uh, I used a little trash talk because I was upset with the people. Wednesday, I get up. My truck is gone. Ah. I, I had got into this during the week, and I was studying this. I said, Ralph, you're talking exactly about yourself, exactly about yourself. It ain't about me, but I'm just using that analogy. Here it is that I repeated myself the year before, and I did the same thing again the year before. And that second part of it, the consequences that came with it. So by me not applying, by me not doing something even better than what I could have done previously, it caused a mishap in my life, you know. I'm still here to tell you about it, which is, hey, it, it is what it is, but I have to still provide a work with my faith on that because it's not going to stop, you know. And I'm not saying that to, I don't want anybody to feel bad or anything like that. I'm just using that analogy to my life. Sometimes we have to use things in our own lives for people to see in order for us to just get a message across. Uh, any comments or questions while we're still on this here? We're still on round five. Any comments or questions? So... With that, um, let's, let's turn to some other scriptures as well. Let's turn to some other scriptures. So, Ralph, do you think that too often that we're, uh, we're not sure if the round's ever going to finish and if we're going to make it to the end? Or do you feel like we're more often um, hoping it'll end quickly or assuming it's going to continue on for a long time, but we're going we're gonna to have plenty of time? You know, there, there's kind of two sides of this. There's there's some that just wait. Of, oh, I got I got plenty of time to to uh, to go on, so I'm not going to get in a hurry of dealing with what, with faith or things now. Right. And then there's sometimes that you just feel like you're in battle. Like I can't wait for this round to end so I can actually get back over to my trainer and get a little rest. Right. 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 And that's a good question that you're saying that because that's two different two different things. Are we going to finish? And 
how do we get there from Venice? My question, my answer or comment to that is, when you, you make the last part, when you say that all we want to finish and then get back to the trainer, I think we'll never finish. I think that's where Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God is there. We're always, they're always there for us. I think the problem comes in is whereas we feel like we've got too much strength and we've overcame their weaknesses, but we don't prepare for what's to come. It's almost like saying that, okay, I don't have a financial problem, so I, don't have, I ain't got to worry about that. But now, just because you're exempt from that one problem doesn't mean that another one is, is going to come. Because I think Paul said every time that he tried to do good, badness, I mean, evil was always there. It was always there. So I don't think as especially now as we being Christians, as whereas I don't think we're going to ever be exempt from or either we may pass the test, you know, and we may have learned from that test. And hopefully, you know, when I was talking about about us not putting in anything in place of, um, providing some ropes with that faith, you know, to fortify that situation. But it still doesn't mean that it's going to come around again to us. I, don't, I, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, I hear what you're saying, that do, do, do we feel like we're going to ever win the match? If you really want to look at it, we've already won. I think, you know, to answer that question, we have already won. I think our problem is, is that we don't want to get in the battle. And when we end the battle, we think that we don't need nobody while we end the rounds. And then number two is that we don't we even forget about who got us in the round in the first place. I mean, <coughs> we didn't start the war. The war started in heaven and it was brought down. We, we know with, the, with uh, Satan taking over, trying to take over, whatever the case may be. But not even just that. We have already, the victory is already ours. I think we just have to do our part in the process of us um, just trying to win. You know, you know, it's almost like I was saying about the job part, whereas you want a job, you want a job, you want a job, but you never do anything to try to get that job. And I think it's the same way with our, with our salvation. Salvation is already there with you being that boxer in the corner. You've already won. You have already won. But you think you're just going to sit there and just not do anything? Yeah, Christ came down there and he won it for us. Yeah. But we still have to have our part. It's just like saying, all of my life I've been a bad person and I've sinned all my entire life. And then all of a sudden, then I expect for me to, you know, to, to, to get the, the belt and everything like that. Almost like all of the bouts that you feel like that you went through, that you have lost. And you feel like that you finally won the championship and you've lost, you know. Somewhere within those rounds, there, there's got to be a winning process. There's got to be a blow that you have thrown that, that may have caused you to win. I think we'll see in our next round, which is the intermission part of it, that's what I call it, the midway scorecard, on how we want to use it. I don't know if that answered what you said because there was a lot that you said on that. And I'm still kind of thinking about it, but I was just making comments to reference off of what you were saying. Is there anybody got any comments about what Keith said or just any I think, comments? I, I think sometimes, yeah, it's just wearing. Because it said the rounds just keep on going. Especially when it's the same rounds. Right. Like it just keeps on going. Yeah. Like you said, it just keeps on going. And it's the same battle. Right. And then, I mean, like the war's already been won. We know that we, we gain the victory if, if we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. But sometimes we, our own personal battles get our mind off track and we're not looking at our trainer. Our trainer's right there in the corner. And we can be throwing punches. Well, we need to be throwing punches and still looking at Jesus as, as we're going through that because that, that will give us strength and that will give us confidence that that we're about to win, win this little battle also. Right, right, but, right. And that comes with the, the patience and, and what you were saying at first, um, Ecclesiastes about, mm -hmm. you know, God brought, allow us to go through good and bad, so so he wouldn't allow us to go through bad if we could win. Right, right, right. And then the essence on that, that's why he talks about us wearing the whole armor. You can't win about by leaving one piece of your armor right. to where it's at. Same thing with a box. You can't win having one glove and think mm -hmm. that you're going to be effective in winning. Mm -hmm. So your preparation and preparing for it is you got to put the whole part of it on. Same thing with a boxer. You can't go in there. You got to go in there knowing that you're going to succeed. You may get hit. You may get popped. You may have this. I may be swollen. But the thing is, finish the round. Finish the round. Because victory is already ours. Any other questions or comments before we dismiss this morning? I hope there was something that was said um, this morning.
hope it edified and encouraged you all. I hope uh, next week we have a picnic. Um, so we won't have class next week. We have a Sunday morning picnic uh, in the park next week. So we won't be here that week, but we'll, we'll be here the following week afterwards. Any questions or comments before we close? If not, let us pray. Oh, kindly, heaven, gracious Father, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, this morning, Lord, for us just going through another bout, Lord, and just knowing that you are God, our referee, and you see all and you know all. We thank you for Christ who already went through it, Lord, and we use his demonstration and how, how, how to beat the enemy, Lord. Even sometimes, Lord, we get angry and we say we do things, Lord, but we still want to keep the abundance of love in our hearts, Lord, to know, Lord, that we are your children. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides us daily, Lord, and just we just thank you for for everything that it does for us and the guidance that it provides for us. Lord, we pray, Lord, that through our worship service this morning, Lord, that it be not, that it may not be in vain, and that all the glory be given unto you. And we thank you for grace and for mercy. We love you, Lord, in Christ's name. We pray and we say, Amen. Amen. All right, guys, have a great morning. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Like, okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, that's that same question, though. Yeah, y'all have all the guys say, hey, Joe. Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? I keep saying I'm going to. Bring me a tote bag for my tote bag. That's a good idea. Yeah. My mom made this. My dad wears overalls. <laughs> and so she cuts up his old overalls and makes the kids' bags. And I can put like his crayons and stuff in the front, and she didn't put a, the back pocket on there. That's what I told her. <laughs> yeah, those are dark. I told her, I said, you know, you should make these and put them online or something. Yeah, there would definitely be a market for that. Yeah.